Intensity by Dean Kuntz. Um, I've had this book for a long time. It's missing the first, uh, it was eight pages, but now, uh, page nine and ten, like the bottom left corner, tore off because the cover also tore off. So, the section that I want to read, um, it's the, the beginning of it is like torn, but, um, China and Laura are driving, um, well, mom's the best, so relax, China said, but she has this disappointed look she gives you that's worse than wire coat hangers. Most people don't know this, but mom is the reason the Cold War ended. Several years ago, the Pentagon sent her off to Moscow so she could give the whole damn Politburo the look. And all those Soviet thugs just collapsed with them from remorse. Ahead of them, the old man in the Buick checked his rearview mirror. The white hair and the headlight beams, the angle of the man's head, and the mere suggestion of his eyes reflected in the mirror suddenly engendered in China a powerful sense of deja vu. For a moment, she didn't understand why a chill came over her, but then she... And this is where the... The page kind of tears off and back in memory to an incident that she had long tried unsuccessfully to forget. Another twilight, something so many years ago, a lonely Florida highway. And she said, He, what's wrong? Tana, you're as white as a ghost, what is it? And then it's torn off. I was just a little girl in the room, Everglades. Swampy like the glades, with the everything from that back row. China <clears throat> had been with her mother and Jim Waltz, a Key West drug runner and drug dealer and gun runner, with whom they had lived now and then <clears throat> for a month or two at a time during her childhood. They had been on a business trip and had been returning to the Keys in Waltz's vintage red Cadillac. One of those models with massive tail fins and with what seemed to be five tons of chrome grill work. Waltz was driving fast on that straight highway, exceeding 100 miles an hour at times. They hadn't encountered another car for almost 15 minutes before they roared up behind the elderly couple in the tan Mercedes. The woman was driving, for like close crop silver hair, 75 as she was a day. She was doing 40 miles an hour. Waltz could have pulled around the Mercedes. They were in the passing zone and no traffic was in sight for miles on that dead flat highway. But he was high on something, China told Laura, eyes still closed, watching the memory with growing dread as it played like a movie on a screen behind her eyes. He was most of the time high on something. Maybe he was cocaine that day, I don't know, don't remember. He was drinking too, they were both drinking him and their mother. They had a cooler full of ice, bottles of grapefruit juice and vodka. The old lady in the Mercedes was driving really slow and that incensed Waltz. He wasn't rational. What did it matter to him? He could have pulled around her. But the sight of her driving so slow on the wide open highway infuriated him. Drugs and booze, that's all. So irrational. When he was angry, red faced arteries throbbing in his neck, jaw muscles bulging. No one could get angry quite as totally as Jim Waltz. His rage excited, <clears throat> always excited her, so she teased him, encouraging him. I was in the back seat, hanging on tight, pleading with her to stop, but she kept at him. For a while, Waltz had hung close behind the other car, blowing his horn as the elderly couple, at the elderly couple, trying to force them to go faster. A few times, he had nudged the rear bumper of the Mercedes with the front bumper of the Cadillac metal kissing metal with a squeal. Eventually, the old woman got rattled and began to swerve erratically. Afraid to go faster with Walt so close behind her, but too frightened of him to pull off the road and let him pass by. Of course, China said, he wouldn't have gone past and left her alone. By then, he was too psychotic. He would have stopped when she stopped. It still would have ended badly. Walt had pulled alongside the Mercedes a few times, driving in the wrong lane shouting and shaking his fist at the white-haired couple, who first tried to ignore him and then stared back, wide-eyed and fearful. 
Each time, rather than drive by and leave them in his dust, he'd drop behind again to play tag with their rear bumper. To Waltz and his drug fever and alcoholic haze, this harassment was deadly serious business with an importance and a meaning that could never be understood by anyone who was clean and sober. To China's mother, it was all a game and adventure, and it was she and her ceaseless search for excitement who said, I'm going to give her a driving test. Walt said, test? I don't need to give your bitch a test to see she can't drive for shit. This time, as Walt pulled beside the Mercedes, matching speeds with it, Anne said, I mean, see if she can keep it on the road, make it a challenge for her. To Laura, China recalled, there is a canal parallel to the road, one of those drainage channels you see along some Florida highways. Not deep, but deep enough. Waltz used the Cadillac to crowd the Mercedes onto the shoulder of the road. Bowman should have crowded him back, forced him the other way. She should have tramped the pedal to the floor and pegged the speedometer and gotten the hell out of there. The Mercedes would have outrun the Cadillac no problem. But she was old and scared and she'd never encountered anyone like this. I think she was just disbelieving. So unable to understand the kind of people she was up against, unable to grasp how far they'd go, even though she and her husband had done nothing to them. Waltz forced her off the road, and Mercedes rolled into the canal. Waltz had stopped, shifted the Cadillac into reverse, and backed up to where the Mercedes was swiftly sinking. He and Anne had gotten out of the car to watch. China's mother had insisted that she watch too. Come on, you little chicken, you don't want to miss this baby, this is one to remember. The passenger side of the Mercedes was flat against the muddy bottom of the canal, and the driver's side was revealed to them as they stood on the embankment in the humid evening air. They were being bitten by hordes of mosquitoes, but were hardly aware of them, mesmerized by the sight below them, gazing through the driver's side windows of the submerged vehicle. It was twilight. China told Laura, putting in towards the images behind her closed eyes. So, <clears throat> the headlights <clears throat> were still on even after the Mercedes sank, and there were lights inside the car. They had air conditioning, so all the windows were closed, and neither the windshield nor the driver's side window had shattered when the car rolled. We could see inside because the windows were only a few inches underwater. There was no sign of the husband. Maybe he was knocked unconscious in their room. But the old woman, her face was at the window. The car was flooded, but there was a big bulb of air against the inside of the glass, and she pressed her face into it so she could breathe. We stood there looking down at her. Waltz could have helped, their mother could have helped, but they just watched. The old woman couldn't seem to get the window open, and the door must have been jammed, or maybe she was just too scared and too weak. China had tried to pull away, but her mother had held her, speaking urgently to her, the whispered words born on a tide of breath sour with vodka and grapefruit juice. We're different than other people, baby. No rules apply to us. You'll never understand what freedom really means if you don't watch this. China had closed her eyes, but she'd still been able to hear the old woman screaming into the big air bubble inside the submerged car, muffled screaming. Then, gradually, the screaming faded, finally stopped, China told Laura. When I opened my eyes, twilight had gone and night had come. There was still light in the Mercedes, and the woman's face was still pressed to the glass, but a breeze had risen, rippling the water in the canal, and her features were a blur. I knew she was dead. She and her husband, I started to cry, waltzed in like that. He threatened to drag me into the canal, open a door, on the Mercedes and shoved me inside with the dead people. My mother made me drink some grapefruit juice with vodka. I was only seven. The rest of the way back to Key West, I lay in the back seat, dizzy from the vodka, half drunk and a little sick, but still crying, but quietly, so I wouldn't make Waltz angry, crying quietly until I fell asleep. In Laura's Mustang, the only sounds were the soft rumble of the engine and the singing of the tires on the black top. China finally opened her eyes and came back from the memory of Florida, from the long ago humid twilight to the Napa Valley, where most of the red light had gone out of the sky and darkness encroached on all sides. The old man in the Buick was no longer in front of them. They were not driving as fast as before and evidently had gotten far ahead of them. Laura said softly to God. 
Chan was shaking uncontrollably. She plucked a few Kleenex from the console box between the seats, blew her nose, and blotted her eyes. Over the past two years, she had shared part of her childhood with Laura, but every new revelation, and there was so much to reveal, was as difficult as the one before it. When she spoke of the past, she always burned with shame, as though she had been as guilty as her mother, as if every criminal act and spell of madness could be blamed on her, though she had been only a helpless child trapped in the insanity of others. Will you ever see her again? Laura asked. Recollection had left China half numb with horror. I don't know. Would you want to? China hesitated. Her hands were curled into fists. The damp Kleenex wadded in the right one, maybe. Brush takes why? To ask her why, to try to understand, to settle some things, but maybe not. Do you even know where she is? No, but it wouldn't surprise me if she was in jail or dead. We can't live like that and hope to grow old. They drove down out of the foothills into the valley. Eventually, China said, I can still see her standing in the steamy darkness on the banks of that canal. Greasy with sweat, her hair hanging dank, damp and all tangled, covered with mosquito bites, eyes blurry from vodka. Laura, even then, she was still the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. She was always so beautiful. Like an angel, she was never half as beautiful as when she was excited when there had been violence. I can see her standing there, only visible because of the greenish glow from the headlights of the Mercedes rising through the murky canal water. So ravishing in that green light, glorious, like, glorious, the most beautiful person you've ever seen, like a goddess from another world. Gradually, China's trembling subsided. The heat of shame faded from her face, but slowly. She was immeasurably grateful for Laura's concern and support, a friend. Until Laura, China had lived secretly with her past, unable to speak of it to anyone. Now, having unburdened herself of another hateful, corrupting memory, she couldn't begin to put her gratitude into words. It's okay, Laura said, as if reading China's mind. They rode in silence. They were late for dinner. 